we'll walk through the webinar presentation for Sternberg Softview Lens Technology today. Uh, all the agents on the phone, if you would please uh, mute your phones, and we will have uh, we will be taking at the end of the presentation questions from the audience. And in the lower right-hand corner, there is a little chat box area that you can write your questions in, and we will be answering those questions before we conclude the session today. Also, um, I wanted to uh, let you know that uh, everybody will get a copy of this presentation at the conclusion of today's uh, event. On the, uh, on the phone with us today is uh, it's myself, Mark Dean. I'm the VP of Marketing for Sternberg Lighting. Also joining me in doing the bulk of the technical presentation will be Paul Mitchell. He is our National Education Manager. He also serves as our Western Regional Sales Manager. And uh, he is uh, heavily involved in the IES and uh, Roadway Lighting Committee and others, other things, and, uh, and very connected to the, uh, the science of lighting. Um, today we're going to uh, go, as, as a matter of, uh, of an overview, I want to let you know we're we're here today to talk about SoftView lens technology. SoftView is our terminology for a lens system that will serve as a mitigating uh, surface for glare. We're going to introduce that technology to you. Uh, we're also going to walk through this PowerPoint presentation, which you will get a copy of by the end of the day. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to walk through this and create an understanding with the with you guys, so that you can go and feel comfortable in front of your agents or agents, not your agents, your customers and the marketplace, be able to talk about this technology, and actually be able to write specifications and anchor customers in the knowledge that this is a have-to-have -have technology, so that your specifications become rock solid. You can close more business. And you can write a, a solid specification that your competitors and our competitors will not be able to defeat. Um, we also want this to be relatively short, uh, to the point, and be uh, repeatable for you. So we've included uh, this six-slide presentation, which, which Paul will walk through here in a moment for you. Uh, it has some several graphics on it that are relatively uh, easy to understand and uh, will be even easier to understand once Paul talks over them. And at the bottom of each slide, there is some, some text information that will help remind you of the, uh, the points that are worth hitting uh, with your customer. Um, so that being said, I'd like to kick this off and hand this over to Paul for, uh, for his walkthrough. Thanks, Mark. As Mark mentioned, uh, one of the things I do in my my education capacity is I serve on both the IES Roadway Lighting Committee and also the Planning Committee for the IES Street and Area Lighting Conference, which actually just wrapped up this week in Nashville. And I can tell you from my activity with both of those committees, which are completely separate committees within the IES, the issue of glare consistently runs through discussion in both of those. The accelerated adoption of solid state lighting for our industry is certainly a great thing. But it has brought up the issue of disability and discomfort glare. It's brought it to the forefront, uh, particularly because now uplight and cutoff have really been largely addressed um, by the, the move away from um, vertical HID lamps. People don't really specify or use vertical HID lamps anymore. If you're going to do HID, it's generally a horizontal lamp up in the roof. So today's battleground, if you will, especially with dark sky folks, and people who are always pressing for better lighting control is glare. So Sternberg began aggressively targeting this issue of disability and discomfort glare about 18 months ago while we were developing the contemporary products that you've all seen in our new urban line. And our thinking in addressing this glare issue was kind of based on what happens with music at high volume levels. You've all experienced this. You take some music and you crank it way up, and at some point a percentage of that just becomes noise. If you turn it down just a bit, it becomes much more clear, becomes understandable, and generally it's going to be more enjoyable. So SoftView was designed with that same kind of thinking so that if you could give up a moderate reduction in your overall light level, just tune it down a little bit, you could produce a significant reduction in glare. 
That was our thinking, and we're very excited about what we're able to achieve. We've been telling this story now for several months to our agents, our specifiers, our end users, and they have universally applauded our efforts. We could not be happier with the response we're getting. Uh, one example, Nancy Clanton, those of you who may know Nancy, Clanton Associates out of Boulder, Colorado. Nancy is one of the most singularly influential people in the entire lighting industry. She is involved in all aspects of lighting, very high profile projects, and she's involved at a very, very high level within the IES and other organizations. I presented this along with our agent to Nancy in her office about a month ago, and she was extremely impressed with Sternberg's initiative to address the issue of glare, and she was even more impressed with what we were able to achieve. Naomi Miller is another person some of you may know, probably not as many, but she is a nationally, uh, nationally recognized lighting authority for the PNNL. They're essentially the testing arm of the DOE up in Oregon and Washington. She specifically praised Sternberg and our soft view approach last year in 2013 at the Street and Area Lighting Conference out in, uh, in Phoenix and in Scottsdale. And then the Street and Area Lighting Conference that just wrapped up this week in Nashville, uh, where Mark and I have both attended, we continued to get a response to our soft view samples that we had in our booth that can only be categorized as tremendously positive. It's just a phenomenal response. Soft view is available to all of you right now, as is the presentation we're about to run through. As Mark mentioned, you're going to have these, an electronic version of this in your email shortly. And we're going to run through this and show you how you can present this material in as little as five minutes. Uh, we're going to give you a way to succinctly and effectively hit the high points. We're going to give you some photometric data to back it up. And when you get the electronic copy, as Mark indicated, you'll see there's verbiage on the bottom of the slides that you can go through, review, and get comfortable with your own repeatable presentation for your customers. So with that, you see the first slide on your screen, and you'll see our Solana uh, fixtures. And what you're looking at there is three different lenses. On the left, you've got a clear acrylic lens, which you'll notice the sparkle. In the middle, you've got SV1, or Soft V1, which is uh, a little bit more opaque. That's the first of the Soft View offering. And on the right, you've got SV2, the Soft View 2. And what you'll notice visually is the sparkle, per se, is reduced as you go left to right. So if you have lights that are going to be a lower mounting height, pedestrian level, closer to eye level, then you may want to use the SV2, which is the lens on the right. If you want to just address glare, but you maybe have a higher mounting height, you don't want to give up too much overall lumen output, SV1 in the middle might be your weapon of choice. So on the second slide here in this presentation, you'll see the same image with a little more verbiage, again, kind of explaining what you're looking at. Again, on the left, clear lens, which is going to give you maximum light output, but also maximum glare. SV1 in the middle is going to give you a glare reduction of around 50%. You're essentially going to cut glare in half by giving up just a very modest amount of total overall light. The SV2 on the right, the one I mentioned you might want to use for more pedestrian applications, you can cut down your glare by over 75%, again, giving up a very small percentage of light. Now, the other part of this story that we'll get into in these few slides and you'll see this kind of indicated there in the lower right corner with the, the polar ISO lines, is you're not giving up directionality. Anybody can put a frosted or a white lens under a light source, and you're going to mitigate the glare. But you're probably also going to completely defeat the optics. If you started with a type 2, type 3 micro optic, you're probably going to end up with a type 5 blob. Soft view does not do that. And that's the other reason why this is such a tremendous offering to the product market. On the next slide here, you're presenting this now to engineers, lighting designers. They want to see some specifics. Here's what you've got to start the story with. The three columns you see on the right, FG, SB1, SB2, we built a full cutoff suspended fixture, flat glass, or flat glass configuration, I should say. So in one version, it was an FG lens, a clear flat glass. The other two were built with SB1, and then SV2, all things equal, just changing the lens. On the left side, what you see is the front, the side, and the back. Those are measurements of glare that we measured in luminance, candela per meter squared. Now, I'll take a quick moment to digress just to share with you, because you may bring this into your presentation. 
how important GLAIR is. The new documents coming out of the IES, and that includes RP8, which I can share with you, was sent to the printer last week. That is final. It's done. It is literally being printed as we speak. You should be able to buy it from the IES website as early as next week. RP8 and all of the new documents coming out of the IES have seen a shift from illuminance, which we measure in foot candles, to luminance, which again, candela per meter squared. So you can reference that when you're presenting this. The importance of luminance, all the new IES documents are following that, uh, that shift in addressing that importance. So on the left side, you've got a measure of luminance from the front of 70 degrees. That would essentially be the angle of oncoming traffic to a streetlight pole. 120, which is somewhat behind the pole off at a different angle. And of course, 180 degrees directly behind the light source to measure glare or luminance for windows, residentials, other property lines directly behind the light source. So we measured the glare in those three angles based on lensing. And what you see on the right is that if you went from a flat glass lens to SV1, you were able to knock down your glare by over 50%, 51.4% from that driver angle. And at the bottom in the red, you'll see that you only gave up a total light output of less than 17%, about 16.5% total light. That's about a 3 to 1 ratio. That's tremendous. We're giving up just over 16% of light to cut your glare by more than half. With the SV2, if you choose that lens instead of flat glass, you're going to cut your glare by over 75%, and you only gave up about 4 more percent of your total light, or about 21%. That's almost a 4 to 1 ratio. That is unheard of in the marketplace, to be able to give up just a little bit of light, dial it down a little bit, but have that much of, a, of an impact and glare is phenomenal. On the next slide, you'll see another example of what we talked about, going back to not losing your directionality and your control, because that's certainly one of the great features of, of LED lighting, is the increased directionality and control, much better than HID lamps. Now, I know you can't really read this on the screen, but you'll be able to see this better when you get the electronic version of this slide. On the left side, you've got two IES files, same fixture. It's the fixture you see down in the lower right corner of the screen, or post-op millennia. On the bottom, it was tested with a soft D1 lens. The top was a clear acrylic. All things equal, same LED array, same type 2 optics in both. We just went from a clear acrylic to SV1. If you look on the top of the screen there in the middle where the bullet points are, you'll see in this case, your total light output only dropped by 12%. On the last slide, going from clear flat glass, it changed by about 16.5%. In this case, it only changed by 12%. So you're giving up even less total light to address the glare. The second bullet point is your bug rating. Your bug rating backlight uplight glare improved from 212 to 111. So your backlight went down, your glare went down. And as we mentioned a moment ago, the third bullet point, both, excuse me, both fixtures produce the same type 2 distribution. Your type 2 optics and the clear lens under the SV1 did not suddenly shift to a type 3 or a type 4, or God forbid, a symmetrical type 5. They stayed going where you were pointing that light, got the same type 2. For those of you who are more familiar with bug, you know that the G rating, the glare, is a measurement of lumens that come out in four zones, front high, front very high, back high, and back very high. 60 to 90 degrees on the front and the back side of that fixture is how you measure glare. So we took a look at the percentage of light in those four areas, and it dropped going from the clear lens to the SV1 by just under 11%. So in other words, what that means is of the 12% of total light you were willing to give up to address glare, almost all of that came right out of the glare zones. And that's exactly what we were targeting. As just an extra selling point, I thought it was worth mentioning on the slide that the total uplight out of this fixture even as a post-top fixture, is less than 1%. From memory, I think it was about 0.3. Very, very small. So those last two slides will let you drill a little deeper if you're presenting this to lighting designers or engineers that want a little bit more numbers. But I will tell you from having presented this for a while, the, the landscape architects in particular are the group that really love this because they're working hard to create a space, create an experience, 
They're working with all sorts of color palettes on stones and pavings and building facades. And the last thing they want is for that experience, especially for pedestrians, to be ruined by disability and discomfort glare. So I encourage you to really get this story in front of landscape architects in particular. On the next slide, you'll get a little bit more of a, a layman's explanation of what we're doing, which is essentially optimizing the surface brightness. You've all seen with LED arrays, you've got many points of light. These are extremely bright, somewhat intense little points of light all across that array. Through the soft view technology, we're able to take the directionality of the lumens coming out of those micro optics, and without bending and distorting them, we can optimize the surface brightness as they come out on the other side, the visible side of the lens. And the best way that I relate that to people is I ask people if you've ever put on a really nice pair of sunglasses, something polarized, you all of a sudden see everything just gets sharper. A lot of those blue wavelengths go away or sometimes red goes away depending on the lens, but everything just gets sharper. It doesn't distort things, it just makes them more clear. That's what we're doing. We're not bending the light, we're filtering it. So again, now going to the last slide, it's just a quick summary now of what you saw at the beginning. That makes more sense now that you've just explained the story to people. Going from left to right, you've got a clear lens, maximum output, but also maximum glare. So something a little bit more subdued in the middle, which might be more appropriate for higher mounting heights where you do want to address glare. To the soft view two on the right, which might be perfect for pedestrian applications where you've got that light source again closer to eye level. If you present this effectively, which again you can do through this tool in less than five minutes, as Mark said earlier, you're not only going to write specs, but you're going to be able to hold them. All right, thanks, Paul. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to work, work through a couple of questions that uh, have been answered that seem like they're uh, sort of mainstream questions, uh, one of which is um, which luminaires is, are, is SoftView currently available in? And right now within the Sternberg product portfolio, any luminaire that has a flat lens downlight configuration is available with SoftView 1 or SoftView 2. The current models that uh, we put these, these products in have several other lens options, including SoftView, but this uh, SoftView lens system is available in all of those. In the very near future, we will be putting uh, some SoftView products into the vertical lens products that we have here as well, and that would be the lantern types, so four-sided, six-sided, eight-sided lanterns uh, are also a very good application for this sort of lens product with LED. And um, right now we do have some mocked up in the lab. Early uh, results are very favorable. Uh, Paul and I reviewed some test results last or earlier this week, actually, and um, it looks very good for the Soft U1 uh, the product at this point. So we're going to, uh, as those become available, we'll make announcements out to the marketplace, and you'll you'll see those pop up in front of you uh, in the way of e-blasts or or email. Uh, from uh, a pricing perspective, the question would be: Is there a price adder for the soft view lens options, and the answer to that is no. Uh, these are standard lenses for us, and uh, as of this uh, this moment, we do not charge an upcharge for this lens material. Uh, certainly has a very very high spec value, and we hope you're able to uh, get orders uh, without having to uh, uh, reduce pricing in order to do that. So if you can use this spec feature to hold your prices. Uh, at, at above market value, that would be the best thing for all of us. You can, we can all share in the in the profit from this. Um, can this lens be combined with a house side shield? And yes, if the luminaire itself has a house side shield option, uh, then this lens does not interfere with that. So you can still use this in conjunction with house side shields. Um, it does, though, and I believe Paul mentioned this earlier. It does really spread out the brightness across a larger surface. So in, in a lot of cases, house side shields may not be needed. Uh, but if you if you did, if you really wanted zero light on the back side or some directional side of the fixture, uh, you could, in fact, install a house side shield and get full cutoff there and full uh, backlight control. Uh, can this product be retrofitted into existing products? The answer to that is a qualified no. Uh, we would rather not do that. 
uh, if a customer really had to do it and it was a pressure situation, it could probably be done. But it would defeat the warranty, it would defeat the IP ratings, and it would not be an easy solution to do in the field. You'd have to take the luminaire completely apart and there would probably be uh, a lot of frustration on the customer's part. So I would say, in general, do not uh, commit to having customers do a retrofit of their product. Uh, it would be best done here at Sternberg. So that is, uh, that is about all we have for, for uh, questions today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, presentation. I hope you uh, found some value in it. And I certainly hope that you were able to write specifications that will hold and your customers find value in this uh, for their projects. Uh, before we close, Paul, do you have any other closing comments? Um, actually, just one comment, one, and this pertains a little bit more to our, our urban line offering, the Solana and the Millennia, uh, but it, it goes hand in hand with the Sawfuse story. One of the things that we did when we were designing Solana and Millennia is also to address and mitigate glare. We spread out the light source over the entire surface area of that lens. And you'll, those of you who have seen Millennia and Solana up front, either in a booth somewhere, or samples you've had delivered to your offices, you've seen that. And by spreading out the light source, rather than bringing all the LEDs into one area, it contributes uh, to the issue we were talking about, which was optimizing surface brightness. So you'll see that in some other fixtures as well. But in particular, if you are promoting the newer urban line products like Solana and Millennia with Softview, that's another nice selling point you can make. And I join Mark in thanking you for taking the time to join us today. If you have any questions, uh, you know we're just a phone call away. Thanks, Paul. I appreciate it. And uh, thank all of you for, for tuning in to us today and, uh, and uh, walking through this process with us and, and seeing and learning about our, our new SoftView technology. Uh, and like Paul said, please call us if you have any questions. We're uh, happy to provide samples and and uh, we have some experts here that can help you uh, make sales calls if need be and uh, get this out there to the world so everybody can see it. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you soon.